So welcome back to another episode of DevPlay from Crytek. And uh, once again, we're talking about VR. This time we want to talk about controls. How do you move and how do we do this? And especially, how do you do this? Um, I'm Jan from Deck13. I'm Rod from Black Forest Games. I'm David Bowman from Crytek. Adrian from Black Forest Games. So in the last episode, we've been talking a little bit about your project, Robinson, and your, your Dinosaur Island demos. Mm -hmm. And what we didn't talk about was actually, what are you doing in there, and how does that work? Because we all know it's not like an average gameplay experience. The whole movement or stuff you can do there is so different. So how do you do it? Sure, let me, let me talk about a couple of things. So we'll, we'll go back to the headset. We talked about this last time. Um, in the headset, you've got uh, transponders. And these are picked up precisely with a camera. Now the camera has changed. This, these, this is a developer kit. Yeah. This is not what the consumer has. Uh, the, even the new development kits are lighter and better quality and I just want people to understand that this is going to become even more consumer. Mm -hmm. And the cameras look a lot sexier now too. They're a lot okay. better. Um, but basically that camera sits where you have your monitor mm -hmm. and in your, you know, your play area and then you put your headset on and as you move your head the camera picks up that movement and translates it very, very precisely, very precisely, into the location of the head. And so we know exactly when you're t tilting your head, you're leaning your head, if you turn around and look backwards, we know it, and we can have, make sure that you're seeing exactly what you should be seeing at all times um, in that space. So, I mean, that's the first part of it, is that the head tracking has to be precise. But now, now we know where your head's at, we want you to, to move. We want you to be able to do things in the world. And for Robinson the Journey, and for some of our other unannounced projects, um, we're supporting uh, a base controller uh, so that you can you know, make sure that everybody has access to one of these types of controllers. Right? If you're playing, you should have access to this. So we make sure we map uh, movement with this. Now, movement in VR is a challenge. Yep. You yes, guys have all... mm -hmm. we know it. Mm -hmm. Right, you know yes. it. It's so like the challenge, it, right? It, 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 <laughs> if yeah. you want to rotate your character, you can't do it with only uh, multiplying with the rotation matrix because it feels not right. It makes you sick. <laughs> yeah, it that's does. Right. And especially if you do a lot of it. Oh, we were talking about that earlier, where you know, how long can you spend developing, let alone playing? Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, movement is a big part of that, getting movement right. So what happens so to you important. after one day of developing movement for <laughs> VR? <laughs> well, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you a short story about that. We, were, we have a, a game where you get up very, very high. In our demo, uh, our Back to Dinosaur Island 2, we have, um, you, you're on a zip line and you're going higher and higher and higher. Mm -hmm. And when you let go, you fall. Mm -hmm. And at first we thought it'd be fun. Hey, we'll let you fall and hit the rocks all the way down below. It'd be great. Mm -hmm. Reality. And reality makes you sick in VR when it, when you, it involves falling and then hitting rocks, mm -hmm. and your body stops in the virtual world, mm -hmm. but your body on the, in the real world is saying, what's going on? This isn't what I'm experiencing. Yeah. My inner ear isn't matching what I'm supposed to be feeling. And it makes people very, very sick. So we did about 20 different types of falling, and everybody had to take breaks all day long. And we had some developers like, yeah, I have to work on something else. I can't, <laughs> no more, I'm done. Nobody wanted to fall anymore. Nobody yeah. wanted to fall anymore. So we, we did about 20, we, got, we went back to version number three, and in, which was actually pretty good. And now we've got a falling that, that we like, which is we let you fall for about 2.3 seconds. So you feel like you're falling, and then we fade to black, mm -hmm. which people translate oh. into, okay, I've, I've mm -hmm. died. Mm -hmm. right? So that, that's, a, that's one small example. Yeah. And we were talking about this earlier, and I think yeah, you had right. a good comment about how it's a new experience, a new... Yeah, so we had, the, I think, the last 50 years of 20 years of games development, it was just better graphics, uh, improving technique, better uh, processors, whatever. Mm -hmm. But VR feels like it's starting from, from scratch. And I agree. Our developers thought, oh, this will be easy. Yeah. Mm. All new lessons. Mm. All new lessons. And new tools, though. New, new things that we can do we couldn't do before. And movement... Movements are going to be a part of the challenge. So what we did in our, our, our uh, Back to Dinosaur Island 2 demo, where you're on a zip line, we wanted you to be able to reach up and grab, and then be able to reach with the other hand and grab. How do you translate that to when we have no sensors? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was we still track your head. So what, when you let go with your left hand, and your left hand's floating in space, when you move your head, it, it tracks with your head. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready to grab, you squeeze the trigger, and you grab. 
And now when you're moving your head, it still continues to move the camera, but the hand doesn't move anymore. So it sounds really, really strange, but I played it and it feels really natural. One or two seconds, boom, people yeah. are doing it. Oftentimes we don't even say anything to people, they just start doing yeah. it and they don't even realize they're doing it. Yeah. So it's a new system of controls and movement um, that has evolved just yeah. for VR. And we think it'll be copied by a lot of people when it comes to that type of it's interaction. Like a, like a pointer, right? Like you right. have like a, like a mouse pointer or something, but mm -hmm. it's a glove. But, it's, it, but yeah. it's your hand. Yeah, it's, it's your hand. And, and, then, yeah. and you feel like it's your hand. So, yeah. you, so you're moving in this uh, direction you're facing with the Oculus? Yes. Okay. Because yeah. we did it the other way in our prototype. Because um, we are not moving in this direction we are facing to. We are moving in this direction where the mesh is facing to. So in our prototype, you are sitting in a mesh, uh -huh. also controlling a mesh, uh -huh. like a robot or uh -huh. something right. like that. And you can look right, left or right and straight going forward, like in the car. Absolutely, right. right. Yeah, sitting yeah. in the car. So what I did is uh, to test some um, of the VR specials, uh, do a roll. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, uh, if they hit a trigger. That sounds bold. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So if they hit a trigger, the robot is going to roll and they completely gone. Yes, it's because they get so immersion with this, with the sound and with the vision, they had to put off the, the VR, it, the Morpheus <laughs> yeah. or the, the, the Oculus, yeah. because it was too much for them. It's too much, it is. And, and you have to be careful, especially this first generation mm -hmm. products that we're making, yeah. these games and experiences we're making for the new users of this medium, this mm -hmm. new media that yes, we have. You can say medium. We, do, we don't want to give them negative experiences to be their first experiences. Yes, you're right. We're I've seen some roller coaster things that would, <laughs> I, they would terrify me. And, I, and I, they're important for the thrill, because right, it does show you yeah. the thrill of things. But I think it's very important for all of us to come up with ways of movement. Mm -hmm. And isn't that like that really, comfortable. Like, like you say, like pointing, grabbing, that's OK. But moving through a location is like the most difficult thing, because you don't have your feet. You cannot go somewhere. I mean, there are. Ways that people think of, okay, like I, I'll, I'll create like a ball and someone walks on it, and, but nobody can put this in their living room. And right, or it's expensive. Like oh, cross yeah. the living yeah. room and, and stumble over the table or something. Right. So, so like you just said, you're using like a car, a vehicle. That's also our approach with our first demo. That's so very common. Like yeah. it's, it's simple because you have something that you control like you really, you know it, it's stationary, you sit somewhere like you sit in a car, you look around, yes. so you can, you can use this. Or like another thing that we say, like a Segway, you know? Mm -hmm. Segways are you, good. You're standing there, mm -hmm. it's right. almost like you, you are on a Segway. You yeah. just need to accelerate, do stuff here. But walking across an island? Walk, walking is difficult. And we're not even promising at this point that we're gonna allow just free motion. Yeah. We're not promising it. We actually have it working, we like it, but we're not sure yet whether it's going to translate to a lot of people enjoying it. We still have to do it. This is so new, we're inventing this and we're testing it and we have to bring in new people all the time to say, hey, do, do our assumptions hold true at a big, to a bigger audience? So, uh, you know, the first time you did that role, <laughs> if your developers had become used to VR, some of them would be like, oh, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, you're, right? you're right, right. I do, did it all the time and have no problem. No, no with problem. It. <laughs> but the first time uh, one of the designers played it, oh, it was awful. For so, them. And that's why it's important to get fresh eyes on this because we get used to it. I'll, I'll, I'll point out that when people first started driving vehicles, mm -hmm. right, and they were doing 10, 15 miles an hour, people were like, oh my God, right? And it, we weren't mm -hmm. used to it. We weren't, but now we grow up in vehicles all the time yeah. from childhood, so we don't mm -hmm. think anything of it. When people start growing up in VR, I think people will become able to do a lot of things that we're not going to be able to do in this first generation. Okay, maybe one last last point uh, uh, regarding controls. So we have the controller, and we have like really this this whole setup with the camera. Uh -huh. But what else? Like, do we need gloves, or do uh, we well, need like you know, an move, skeleton? Move, if, if you're doing a PlayStation VR, they already have the Move controllers, which are split. Mm -hmm. um, Oculus has their own split controllers as well, and I, we've been developing with you know both both devices, mm -hmm. and we know that that split controller is very natural. And just like we, we, we solved the problem here of how to make it map to your hands and your head, we also, with the move controllers and or the, 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 the Oculus split controllers, it's the same thing, so it's you more have natural. all the stuff mm -hmm. here at Crytek to develop. Well, with. we're, we're very clo working very closely with the, the hardware manufacturers because they want us to, they have great hardware, they need great experiences. Yeah. 
And CryEngine really allows us to do things that it's hard to do with other engines. So they're, they're, like we're working very closely with them. I had the chat with the guys from uh, Keep Talking and Nobody Dies. That's a game which also in VR yep. possible. And they thought about how uh, to give people the most accessible way to control. And I thought about the uh, Xbox One controller or the Xbox controller. I said, okay, everybody knows it, so mm -hmm. it's automatic working. And then they found out, they gave it to people, and this was in VR experience. And I had lots of people who were not even knowing the Xbox controller because it was a different audience. Right. Yeah? And yep. this is not an, every gamer knows it. But a non-gamer, non -gamer, no. it's not no natural. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's learned, like you yeah. said, with the, with the, with yes. the vehicle. And like you said, like for maybe 20 or 50 years, like you have the Nintendo controller, you have like the, really like the buttons and, mm -hmm. and the, the yeah. pad, and, and it's not so different. It's a bit like analog, and you just mm -hmm. stop. That's it. No, well, the the, rest is really the moment, the though, you pick up one of these handheld devices, and you track it accurately, that's very natural. People can do this. Yeah. And they're all just playing. Like the Wii, back, back when the Wii for yeah, Timo, yeah. right? It, it, it does make it more mass market. Mm -hmm. And I think VR, um, and we'll probably end up talking about this at some point as well, VR is going to explode in popularity as it becomes more and more comfortable and easy to use and the prices drop, et cetera. It's going to explode. This actually is our next subject. It's the future of VR. What do we think from a developer perspective, from what we're doing right mm -hmm. now? So yeah, thanks a lot and thanks for, for watching. And please tell us what you think in the comment section. And yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. Bye. Thank you.